Hi there. Welcome to another video on the future of entrepreneurship. Remember the first video we talked about business with purpose. We're still under that umbrella, but today we want to look at how to embed social value steps one, two, three. Hi there. My name is Bumi Toko. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at what social value is. Then I'm going to give you the key steps to actually embedding social value into your business or your organization. And I'm going to give you some really insightful examples that you can use at the end. And then we will wrap up. So let's get going. Remember, this is all about business with purpose. Now, what is social value? Social value is contribution to the long-term well-being and resilience of individuals, communities, and society in general, taking account of the wider economic, social, and uh, environmental effects of their actions. In other words, it's talking about looking after people, looking after their well-being, looking after the planet, looking after its well-being, and also making money. All right, it's what's called the triple bottom line. This actual definition is from Social Value Portal. Let's get into the three steps of how to embed this social value into your organization, assuming you're starting from the beginning. Even if you have already started your business, you can still use these three steps. So the first thing you need to do is to get your people together, your employees, your partners, your other directors, get them together and tell them why. Tell them why this needs to happen now. When people know the reason, they're more likely to engage. But if you just say, oh, we want to just embed such a value into our organization, I was like, okay, what's that? I'm not really interested. But if they know why each individual needs to be interested now, then they are more likely to take action. So what kind of information do you think may appeal to an individual? Because it's so easy for people to bury their heads in the sand and just think, oh, this doesn't really affect me. But hang on a minute, every action you take affects you because we live in an ecosystem. That word, that word ecosystem means that whatever you put into the atmosphere comes back to you. Let's take marine life, for example. Do you know that industrial waste, agricultural waste, mining waste, you say, well, I don't do that. Okay, what about sewage waste? Because we all do. What about plastic? All those kind of things affect the marine life. And where the marine life and water is affected, it comes back to us. Why is that? Because apparently scientists tell us that 50% of the air we breathe is as a result of water as a result of oceans and rivers. Just imagine when those oceans and rivers are polluted. What kind of air do we breathe in? What if those oceans and rivers and seas are polluted? What kind of food do you think ends up on our table? If we think that we are not affecting the sea or the ocean, well, what about the plastic we use? Ends up in somebody else's coastal region and the fish in that coastal region will eat some of that plastic and when they eat some of that plastic that fish could end up on your dinner table what about that the point i'm making not to scare you is just that we are in an ecosystem and every action we take not only affects the land it affects the water, it affects the atmosphere, it affects everything around us. So we need to be conversant of that. Again, just sticking to marine life, we'll talk about this in other areas as well. Marine life produces employment for people. A lot of uh, individuals work in the fishery uh, industry. And if there is no more fish for them to catch because we've... <laughs> basically eradicated all the fish because of the poison we've released or the pollution we've released into the seas and the ocean, then we're going to put people out of work. So the first thing you need to do is to tell every individual that they can make a difference and this is why they can make a difference and this is why we need to act now. Okay, once you got that point across and everybody is like, okay, what do I need to do? then you can move on to the next step. 
The second step is to pick a sustainable development goal. And I want to advise you to follow this system of picking a sustainable development goal from the sustainable development goals that have been released by the United Nations. Here you see a picture of the 17 sustainable development goals. But wait a minute, I want you to choose the one that best fits your current business. So let's say you are in the business of producing educational material. Well, it's more fitting for you to choose a sustainable development goal that links to that. And not goal number four links to that because it talks about quality education. So you, you'll be able to add value in that area. Okay, so let's say you sell water filters. Well, choosing number six, clean water and sanitation will probably be more fitting to your business right now. So that's how you choose one sustainable development goal. And I'm going to suggest you also choose a local charity that you can actually help because that means that you are not only affecting people internationally, could be, but you will also be contributing to your local society. And that could be so powerful because when you begin to record and evaluate your outcomes, it will be better for you to communicate those outcomes to the society where you're located and even beyond. So therefore, it is important for you to choose the goal that you want to pursue. You got to have a goal. You got to have a focus in mind. So whatever you want to do, you need to choose first a sustainable development goal and also you choose a local charity that you want to support and that you want to help. And when I'm going to talk about choosing a local charity, it's more than you just sending them hundred pounds or a thousand pounds every year. No, perhaps you can do that as well as maybe visit them, physically get involved in some of their activities. If all you can do is give money, okay, for a period, but you need to choose one where you can actually get involved physically as well. So that some of your staff can actually give more than money into helping to change that community. All right, that's the second step. The third step, which is very critical, is where you now choose to include the social value you want to offer in your mission statement. Now, I'm borrowing some work by Panja Arora on LinkedIn, and I want to show you some examples of three well-known companies that have a mission statement with social value included. So let's take a look. One, Chevron. It says our company's foundation is built on our values, which distinguishes us and guide our actions. We conduct our business in a socially responsible and ethical manner. We respect the law, support universal human rights, protect the environment, and benefit the communities where we work. See, that's what I was saying to you earlier, choose a local charity. You've got to understand this, that if an organization as big as Chevron is pursuing social value, you've got to be doing the same thing, no matter what your size is, all right? Let's look at another example here. This is the example of Adidas. And Adidas says, we are a global organization that is socially and environmentally responsible, that embraces creativity and diversity and is financially rewarding for our employees and shareholders. You see, <laughs> in time past, it used to be that most of this organization were only financially rewarding for their shareholders. Now they are getting wise because they need to follow the triple bottom line idea of people, planet, and then profit. You gotta look after your people because if you don't look after the people, they're not gonna be able to deliver the kind of work you would prefer. So they are actually looking after not only the environment, but they're also looking after their employees and they are looking after their shareholders. Okay, so let me go to the third one, example three. So this is Apple. Apple Computers is committed to protecting the environment, health, 
and safety of our employees, customers, and the global community where we operate. So where do they operate? Well, they operate globally. In other words, they are committed to not only improve the environment, but they're committed to the well-being, health of people, employees, and their customers. In other words, whoever is engaged with Apple, they are committed to ensure that they have better health, they have better well-being. So the point is, they are also pursuing social value. They have embedded social value into their organizations. And I'm saying that, and I reiterate what I said earlier, the question I asked earlier, which is this, if organizations like this, major corporations like this, are embedding social value into their business, what about you? What will you include in your own mission statement? Put in the comment box below. And also, if you want to write anything about what has been said today, please include it in the comment box. It will be lovely to hear your comment on this matters. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe to the channel, like it, share it, and let's get the word out that we need to run businesses with purpose. God bless you. See you soon.